This video is a demonstration of PROP, the software for acoustic phonetic analysis. This video won't be a step-by-step -step or how-to guide for using PROT, but rather I want to demonstrate the usefulness of PROT, in particular for descriptive linguistics. That's the second disclaimer, is that I'm not a phonetician. I uh, mostly work in morphology and syntax, but also phonology. And so I want to show those who are not phoneticians how and why they would be interested in using PROT even if you never become an expert in all of the functions that the program has to offer. So this is the front interface and the basic thing you need to know is about opening files is just to click on open and read from file and that will bring you to a window browser where you can select the file you want to work with. I've already selected a few files and they appear here in the objects window. Have to look at a particular file that you want to work with you can simply click view and edit and that will bring up the file here the first thing you notice is the uh, waveforms that you're probably familiar with from having seen visualization of other sound files um, now in order to see a bit more you're going to have to learn how to navigate and prompt which uh, isn't always very intuitive um, under the view, you can see what some of the shortcuts are for uh, moving around. The shortcut that you really need to know is the use of tab for playing a sound. So I can use that uh, and it's gonna start playing the sound from where this red line is. I'll just press tab. So this is a recording from the Kodi language spoken in Sumba, a word list that we took to do an initial analysis of the phonology. Now, of course, I can click in different places to start the recording uh, in a different location. Both. And if I click and hold down, I can select a portion of the recording. And then when I press tab, I only hear what I've selected. Both. Um, for zooming in and out, moving around uh, your file, I typically use these buttons at the bottom of the screen, all to see the whole file, in to zoom in, out to zoom out. Uh, but really useful is this button for zooming into whatever you select. So I'm going to go ahead and select just one of these instances of the word being pronounced and press the select button. And now we've zoomed into just what I selected. I can press tab to play this. Now you can see once we've zoomed in, a uh, spectrogram is generated for you. And even if you don't know what a spectrogram is, you can uh, quickly learn uh, how some sounds uh, appear in a spectrogram. So for example, Oto. this T sound here, you can see uh, pretty clearly what voiceless stops look like. There's no uh, um, marking at all in this section. Uh, if it was a voice stop, you would expect uh, continued dark marking here at the bottom of the spectrogram. That isn't there. You can also see what this nasal looks like. And by using the visualization, you can select just where the nasal sound is and listen to the pre-nasalization. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then you can get a pretty good idea that this is where the stop sound starts. Etc. This blue line that's appeared is a line that shows the pitch, and that can be uh, activated through going to the pitch menu, showing pitch or not. And when you click anywhere on that pitch, you see a blue number appear to the right that tells you what the level of hertz is for where you've clicked on the, the pitch. You can also select a range. So if you wanted to know for this vowel, what the average or the mean pitch is, you can select that. Uh, portion, go to pitch and um, get pitch. That will give you a mean for that selection. Uh, intensity works in a similar way. If you go to menu show intensity, there'll be a yellow line that will show you the intensity different place. So that can be useful. Uh, say if you're doing an examination of stress that might be connected to intensity, you could get a visualization of that as well. As you're working with a sound file, you may want to add some annotation or some notes to keep track of what you're looking at. You can do that as, uh, under the annotate. So if you select the file that you're uh, working with or that you want to annotate, 
and you choose annotate to text grid. Uh, that will ask you uh, to name the number of tiers that you want. So in this case, I'm gonna have two tiers, one tier for marking segments and one for marking a word. And I'm not gonna use any point tiers. Now we see text grid appear in the object. If I want to edit it and view it with the sound, I have to select both the sound and the text grid. Here I'm doing that by using control to select both of them and then collect view and edit. And now I see my sound and the text grid. So if I wanted to label each of the segments, I could select where this prenasal eye stop is. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, this first text grid number one is highlighted. So if I press enter, it's going to create a segment there. And if I select that, it should be identical to mm -hmm. my selection. Mm -hmm. And I can go ahead and type in MB to mark that grid and also appears here on the top right. Auto. Now the next sound, I can do the similar thing. I can make my selection and press enter and type in O. Similarly for the T sound, press enter. Do my selection, make sure it doesn't overlap, press enter and T. And the final O. I can listen to these to see if I think they're correct and uh, move them, drag them across the screen to move them around. It's also possible to continue to zoom in a bit closer if you want to try to get more uh, exact or precise in where you're putting your, your annotations. And if here on the bottom, I just want to make a, uh, say I want to make a single annotation. So I remember what word this is. I can select the whole thing and then go to the second grid, make sure that's highlighted and number two. If I press enter, I'll get an annotation that encompasses all of these recordings. And I'm just gonna say that this was word number 516 in my list. So that can be useful uh, for your own work, for your own annotations, but it can also be useful for bigger projects if you're working with a larger file. So let's give an example of that. I'm gonna look at this file, which has, um, the same Cody word list, but uh, hundreds of words in a single file. So you can see by uh, the length of this file, how many words it has. We've inserted a number here to correspond to each, what the number was on our uh, list for each of these words. And if I zoom in on one of these, pressing selection, you can see that there's another annotation for each of the words as well. And here we've been trying to measure uh, vowel lengths or vowels in different contexts. And so uh, we've created our own uh, code using capital letters and diacritics to mark what kind of vowels each, uh, what kind of context each vowel is occurring in. And so now we've created a notation for this particular e. vowel in this context, the same vowel e. in a different context, and done that for hundreds of words. And the reason we've done that is we're trying to establish uh, how contrastive length works in this language, uh, particularly uh, when there's certain contexts uh, where we think there's actually up to uh, two or three different ways of contrasting uh, length. And so. In order to establish that length, we want to have uh, averages of differences in vowel lengths across all kinds of contexts. So once we've done all of our measurements, Pratt allows you to run a script, which will go in and give you the duration of each of your measurements. That's done again in the menu. Uh, in this case, we're simply opening a Pratt script that we've taken from another researcher. This one's called Get Measurements. And if you open your script, and choose run and put it in your settings and you'll get the um, output that the script's designed to give you. In this case, this is the output of our script, the CSV file, a bunch of numbers and letters. And if you import that into an Excel file, uh, you can see that what we end up with is the segments that we've labeled in column B. Column C and D have the start and end points of each of those annotations. And then in column E, the key part, it's uh, calculated for us the duration of each of those annotations. So now we have durations for all the vowels that we marked and we can start to compare 
follow links across different contexts in this language. Another really useful way that I've used Prot is in conjunction with Elon. Uh, so Elon is software for uh, uh, time aligned annotations, mostly transcription and translation. And in this case, I was working with uh, Bahrain and looking at uh, idiophones in this language in a corpus of recordings. And I particularly wanted to be able to take into account the prosody or pitch of idiophones. So in this example, uh, there's an idiophone that's repeated four times and the pitch rises each time the word is repeated. <laughs> So I wanted to discuss in a paper what I saw happening with the pitch in this context. And a really easy way to work with uh, sounds out of taking them out of an Elon file. Uh, when you have, as long as you have the WAV file connected to your Elon file, you can just right click on your selection and choose clip selection with prot. If you choose open selection with prot, it will open the whole WAV file. So depending on the size of your file, that may or may not be the way you want to work. In this case, I'm just going to clip the selection with prot. And it's going to give me that same recording now in prompt. Now I have a visualization of the recording, the wave, the spectrogram, and the pitch. Uh, if I'm going to have this image uh, black and white, it might be difficult to tell where the pitch is with the spectrogram behind it. So I can unselect show spectrogram and just see the pitch. And if the intensity also is going to create more uh, unneeded information, you can also remove that. So this is the relevant sentence here. And you can see the pitch rising slightly each time. Unfortunately, in this case, there's some noise here that's creating other lines in the pitch. One way to deal with that is to look at the pitch settings. And if I chose Pitch to be drawn with speckles instead of a curve. It's a bit clearer where the real pitch is and where the noise is. And there's actually ways to work with prop picture to get all kinds of uh, nice looking um, diagrams or illustrations out of this. You can also change the pitch settings if you wanted to um, say bring it down to a lower hertz and that would change the way your, um, your pitch appeared. Um, in the original time I did this analysis, uh, the pitch actually appeared quite a, a bit differently. I didn't have that problem with noise. So I was able to, in this case, just do a screenshot and insert it into uh, the paper I was writing to show um, a clear illustration of uh, change in prosody that happens with uh, repetition of idiophones uh, without having to just uh, explain it in prose. So those are just a couple ways that uh, using uh, prot has been useful in descriptive analysis, both in phonology, but also in cases where uh, prosody interacts with uh, the syntax.